So welcome to Techno Dad Life and my name is Jeff and today what we're going to be doing is reviewing the IFRO K100, I believe that's how it's said, so which is a all SSD NAS and see how that compares to a regular mini PC and our Ugreen all SSD min S. So if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe and I will try to remember to leave links in the description to everything I mentioned in this video. So today someone, IFRO, A-I-F-F-R-O, IFRO, sent me this computer. It's a K100, so it's a N100 for NVMe drive uh, SSD uh, mini computer or NAS. It says NAS on it. Uh, but what's different about this is it does not come with an operating system, which is good if you're like me, because then you can install whatever you want on it. So let's take a look at it. So there it is, IFRO NAS, and it's an N100 Intel HUD graphics, 12th gen, 8 gigabytes of memory, uh, 4 SSDs, M.2s, Gen 3.2. So the directions are in English and Chinese, our USB-C type cable, and then our power supply, which is branded with the IFRO branding on it. And it says USB-C, 5 amp, 3, or 5 volt, 3.5 amp, up to 20 volts, 3.25 amps. And it does have a folding out uh, prongs there directions and basically it shows you how to uh, open up the case and put in SSDs or M.2 drives comes in nice packaging and so on the front there's just a power or power on and off button there and the ethernet is 2.5 gigabit ethernet and then we have a HDMI uh, two USB-C, one power supply USB-C, and two USB-2, which is interesting. Uh, it is tiny, so let's compare this to the Ugreen, which is has similar specs. And you can see it's actually quite a bit smaller. And in fact, this is smaller than even this mini PC. So that's saying something. And so this actually only has two M.2 drives in it. This has four. And the Ugreen actually has four too, but it has the loud noisy fan. Uh, one of the reasons why I said I would review this is because I was hoping that there would be a less noisy sort of a mini PC server. So let's open it up now and see what's inside. So the directions say there's four screws under here. And so it says you need a special tool flare, but there is no tool in here. So we're just gonna see if we can pry it off. These have little clips that hold them in place, but they're also glued in. So they come out a little hard there, so. Okay, so the pads are off and we can see we have four Phillips head screws that we need to take out. Okay, so we have the four screws out and the directions just say remove the bottom cover, but it's not coming off. Oh, there it goes. And so next we have this metal plate here. And if you can see over to the sides here, there's four screws. So we'll take those out next. Okay, so now we're going to take off this plate. And so here you can see we have one SSD already in there and then we have three more spots. Let's pull this one out and see uh, how big that is. So uh, it doesn't, it's just a no name uh, M.2 drive, uh, no branding by any company on it whatsoever. Uh, I think it's about 256 or 256 gigabytes. Uh, that's what I'm going to guess. 
uh, but we have some one terabyte drives, so we'll install those instead. So it looks like this just pops out. I can't find any screws holding it in place, but only one side is wanting to come out here. I don't want to break it. Oh, there, there, and it just popped out. There, and so it just popped out, and so we have a 5 volt, 3.75 watt fan on top. So it's actually a pretty interesting board. So we have some pads <clears throat> on top of the USB drives and the HDMI ports. Everything is on the bottom of the board except for the two USB ports and the um, fan for the processor. So let's take off this now and see what's underneath there. Okay, so we got that undone. Oh, interesting. So next we have to take out, undo the power supply, which we've done there. And then somehow this is attached. So the, the fan is actually on a hinge here. So we have a great copper heat sink underneath. And then uh, obviously the memory is not upgradable, but it looks overall like to be a pretty good design. So let's put it back together and turn it on. So next I'm going to take some, take my SSDs out of the Ugreen here and put them in here, see what happens. And so what I have are three Samsung uh, one terabyte drives. And I look forward to the day when uh, SSDs come in relatively cheap. Uh, four terabyte drives, that would be awesome for this setup. In case you're wondering, uh, I don't have an iFixit toolkit. This is just a cheap X-Cool toolkit, which seems to work fine for me. I like the electric screwdriver. It's good for uh, which, a lightweight screwing, not good for heavy screwing. Good, and the other nice thing about this cool uh, toolkit is it has like a, you can, different magnetics, so you can do uh, whichever one you need. And now we gotta put this back on here. Oh, look, it says front on it. So, there we go. Okay, so we have our first mystery of this. So it's supposed to not come with any software on it, as far as I know. Uh, and but it actually has software on it. Uh, so I could not get the screen record to work with this, so I'll just have to tell you it has Team OS, which it says is COD Cloud, K-O-D-C-L-O-U-D, which I've never heard before. And it looks like it's a NAFS or cloud software program. Uh, it was in Chinese. This is Google Translate. So we're going to take that all off right now, though. So the directions don't say what bus button we're supposed to press for the BIOS. So we're just going to press a couple here. And so it seems to be delete. So now we're in the BIOS. We're going to go over to boot. And we're going to boot from USB drive, hit enter. And then we're going to save and exit. So first we'll try TrueNAS scale, see if that works. Okay, so we have TrueNAS installed, so let's take a look at it. So here is our TrueNAS dashboard, and let's just make sure all our storage devices work, or are there. 
So we have three times one terabyte SSD. So yes, everything is there. And looks like everything should work. Of course, you never know. But next, well, let's try installing Open Media Vault. I think that's what I'm going to install on this. It does have, uh, I just have to say, it does have a little wind noise on it. Here, let's see if we can get it. But it's, it's not too bad. Uh, definitely not as bad as the Ugreen, which this made loud train noises. So I'll be right back. Okay, so now I'm installing Open Midi Vault 7. Okay, so I have Open Midi Vault installed. Seems to work fine. We can see our CPU utilization, our load memory. Uh, our system SSD is right there. And we have our Ethernet adapter. And so there we have our three disks and our SSD. So, so what I'm going to do now is pick one of these out, either Open Media Vault or TrueNAS. That seems to be the best use of these. And I'm going to run that for a month and we'll get back to you. And then on the other one, on my other mini PC, I'm, well, I think actually I'm going to put TrueNAS on this. And on my other mini PC, I'll put Open Media Vault. And we'll go 30 days and or longer. Actually, we'll say 60 days because I'm going on vacation. And then we'll, we'll compare those two in an upcoming video in probably around October. So that's it for today. Hope you found this helpful. Make sure you like and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.